to you know dynamic MFS layout basically. So what is the dynamic uh, MFS layout? We are going to see in more depth over here. So the I was talking about right dynamic layouts basically. So dynamic layout are helpful uh, in those uh, managed resource managed clusters right. So, uh, you know, containerized applications wherein we have a lot of resources, a lot of different, uh, so the shared resources basically, I would say. So, in those, co in those cases, we don't know what could be the depth, uh, you know, for a particular uh, VMware or any other machines where my graph is going to run, right, in Yarn environment or Kubernetes environment where. Kubern Yarn is for SDFS environment and Kubernetes, you know, for the containerized, you know, application. So, in those environments, the, you know, you know, so we use the, uh, so the data is going to be stored as remotely, basically, in the cloud or in SDFS, basically, and we want to achieve the data parallelism, you know. And this data, uh, the depth is going to be changed, you know, depending upon the runtime environment, whenever, uh, depending upon the machine, basically. So in those kind of uh, places, uh, we create the graph using the dynamic layout and we can support this, right? So, uh, so what are the different uh, way, you know, the dynamic layout can be done, right? So there are fixed depth dynamic layout, variable depth dynamic layout, or dynamic MFS based, you know, dynamic layout. So the fixed, <coughs> so first of all, we will talk about the fixed depth, you know, fixed depth uh, dynamic layout, you know, they are, you know, specifically, uh, you know, they are, uh, there is a depth of processing parallelism. So there is an, I talked about the data processing layout and uh, data, uh, processing layout and the, the data layout. Data layout is where the data is going to be residing and the processing layout where actual graph runs, the place where actual graph runs, the place where intermediate file are getting stored. So the fixed, dy uh, fixed depth uh, dynamic layout specify a depth of processing parallelism actually. At runtime what happens is the cooperating system maps that, you know, uh, the number of component partition to either it is in a static list of host or a set of container based resources right so if i give some depth let's say i give a depth of 16 so at runtime what is going to happen is the 16 uh, it is going to the corporate system you know is going to check within the all the hosts right the list of host or a, a contained containerized source resources so if it is uh, equal to 16, then it will assign this that machine to this and this graph is getting executed, right? And if it is, so how we specify is, so when we create the fixed depth, depth is, we will build MFS. Uh, when we create the dynamic MFS is like, we need to provide in build MFS command, we need to provide the dynamic uh, keyword. I want to specify fixed depth, fixed depth you know, dynamic layout. So how it is being done is a fixed depth M file dynamic N. So how you specify, so N is the depth. So, or you can parameterize it also, M file dynamic depth. So this is how you specify the fixed depth dy uh, dynamic layout. Okay. And there are variable depth. So variable depth dynamic layout is, you know, both the job resources and the depth of parallelism are determined at the runtime. So I talked about fixed depth. Depth we know that is not going to be determined at fixed depth, but dynamic variable depth is the depth is also getting, you know, determined at the, at the time of run. You know, the resource manager is, uh, manager's job is to provide the resources and then corporate system and the resource manager, uh, depending upon the availability, so they will decide the depth of the parallelism in case of variable depth actually. So how we specify variable depth is using minus one. So M file dynamic minus one data, data path, partition, uh, MB partition and max depth. So max depth we specify, right? So in the case of, let's say my max depth is 16. So uh, this variable depth could be uh, like four way, eight way, six way, and up till the 16 way. So up till the max depth, this uh, the depth, uh, the, the variable of depth is getting changed. So depending upon the availability of the resources with the resource manager, they would be using that depth of the parallelism. Minus one meaning it's covering system decides the depth of element runtime, not the user. 
you know so how to create the dynamic single directory mfs i told right so this dynamic single directory mfs you just create the use the this one build mfs dynamic single directory you specify then the depth of the this one 64 mfs and then the path so where to create this basically mfs mount path right and then there is a layout okay so how you specify the layout is s3 my bucket mfs 16 way this is the how you specify all right and uh, dynamic mfs right so when you specify a data location or layout in a multi file system created with dynamic argument to the multi uh, build mfs utility the corporate system transform that url to the fixed dynamic layout at runtime the layout depth correspond to the number of data parties in the dynamic mfs so what happens is uh, like uh, i said right so when you create the uh, you know uh, dynamic mfs using the mfs file so you uh, you specify like uh, you know a dynamic and then the uh, then you specify uh, you know dynamic single directory and then mfs dev 16 and mount mount point you can specify and then you can create the mfs directory okay so this is uh, all uh, this one and then we have um, you know what are the different advantages right why we use this actually what is the um, you know what is the different uh, advantage of uh, doing it so there are multiple things where it is you know it is helpful actually so sometimes we need to migrate the uh, migration is going to be easy right so what happens is uh, so i create a graph and i don't know where it is going to be executed right whether it is in a single single node machine or whether it is in a cloud platform or any other set of virtual machines right i don't want to edit the graph uh, for a mere uh, you know depth and uh, you know a multiple system uh, path so i don't want to do that so for that we you know create the dynamic mfs and then so that any other vm you know where you know the whatever depth it is available they can utilize it okay so the migration from uh, uh, from one environment to another environment is easy actually in the case of a dynamic layout but if it is in a uh, if you uh, if you don't use dynamic layout if it is a fixed layout you don't need to modify the graph right between two different machines and the promotion so promotion normally we have a more depth in production environment or right so in those cases also uh, uh, if you want to promote the development to production or development to testing so then uh, if you use the dynamic mfs uh, your depth is dynamic then you can utilize this right easily with this i mean uh, whatever controlled environment or controlled uh, parameterized environment you have you can utilize with respect to build mfs dynamic concept so if you specify dynamic layout or dynamic mfs in those cases you don't have to worry about the uh, whatever way uh, parallel uh, the environment is it is going to be used properly and uh, then there is a collaboration and uh, you know the reuse reuse in the sense of if one development team primarily you know times of works on the kubernetes cluster let's say my my team is working in the kubernetes cluster so there are different clusters there people are utilizing it but uh, some people are uh, using the local virtual machines right but they want to integrate the code at the at the last right so if you are if you are using the dynamic layout concept right so it is very 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 easier to integrate the code and then you can try to con- create the containerized application out of it so these are the different concept actually with respect to dynamic layout and we have talked about uh, you know resource based uh, containerized cluster based uh, mechanisms oh, okay in abinitio also uh, the things can run in uh, containerized uh, you know way right so uh, with uh, with the case of sdfs you know hadoop uh, big data environment uh, there will be yarn yet another resource negotiator so that is uh, responsible for resource negotiation the you know machine providing and all but the corporate system will decide the depth and all right at the runtime in the case of dynamic uh, variable depth they are dynamic right so depending upon that uh, like um, we can do that thank you so much uh, please subscribe my channel and uh, we are going to see many more
uh, concept in times to come. Thank you so much.